Welcome to the Travel Oddies Podcast. It's a Monday, May the 2nd, 2016. This is episode 26. Yay! Episode 26, Emily's Bridge in Stowe, Vermont. Yes, so we'll be talking about another bridge haunting tonight. And maybe get into some of the BS portions of it, if there is any. Right? Dude, okay, we, we we're not to the show yet. I'm already but calling I'm just, it. I'm just gonna say, like every single episode, you scoot the BS portion further and further back. Now we're literally starting we're off. We're gonna start off with the BS portion. Yeah. No, I'm not. There's no like, BS to it. Hey guys, all, welcome to Travel Oddities Podcast. This is all bullshit. <laughs> this has been Travel Oddities. Peace, peace. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Cowabunga. Cowabunga. So, how was your weekend, guys? Our weekend was not as good as yours. No, it wasn't. I no spent way. I spent the weekend at uh, Texas Frightmare Weekend in Dallas, Fort Worth. Um, Really a good time. Got to meet uh, George Romero, uh, Sarah Wayne Cowley's from The Walking Dead. Uh, didn't really meet anybody else because that was kind of my bucket list. For people to meet, because I've got a, a Walking Dead poster that's got Michonne, the governor, I mean, all these people's signatures on it. So I needed to add Lori to the to the list. So it was fun. I was sick all weekend. I'm still kind of getting over it now. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's what I did. So Were they all as nice as you thought they were going to be? Some of them, you kind of walk by the line, and you can just tell they're kind of kind of over the weekend already because let's be realistic here a lot of the people that go to these horror conventions are people that aren't exactly young so you know unless you're somebody that's like robert england who you know isn't young but he, he gets around to these conventions quite a bit he's used to long long lines but there were some other people you could, you know, it was like, uh, they look frustrated or they look like they're over it. So I kind of avoided it. I mean, it's, yes, they're inviting you to come say hi and get an autograph. But it's kind of, at times, kind of feels like when you're in a restaurant, you see somebody famous, you want to go say something, but you're like, let's let, let them have a sandwich, you know? So I just kind of, I didn't want to add to the, to the, the numbers. So I just kind of did a few things and. Walked around, bought some cool T-shirts, stuff like that. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, did you hit up any cool hole in the wall restaurants that we can recommend? To uh, there was nothing. I went to Papa Do's. It's a seafood restaurant. It's kind of a chain down there, but it's really good. If you've ever been to Papa Do's, uh, you don't eat seafood though, do you? Yeah, I went to Olive Garden. Okay, dude, that's not helpful to our listeners. Well, yeah. I mean, we went to try to see this. Uh, there was a burger place called Blues Burgers. That's down there, and it was closed on Sunday. We didn't get a chance to go Saturday. So now, I mean, it's I'm gonna pay. I've got some pictures I'm gonna share on Instagram and maybe throw them up on the Facebook page. Uh, you suck, bro. I'm telling you. I know it, man. You're like I know. I, I went to McDonald's in Texas. You know, in Mc, in Texas, the McDonald's number one is not the Big Mac. It's number two in in, in Texas. Well, if you're in New Mexico, you can get a freaking green chili cheeseburger. At McDonald's. Can't get one here like that. That is a travel oddity. That is a travel oddity. Technically. Technically. So. That's a gall dang um, <laughs> geographical oddity. Something else that's odd. I have I have an Xbox One. We talked about this off the air. I haven't hooked it up yet. Still in the box. Still just sitting there. I don't know what's wrong. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know why I'm not excited. I'm not engaged. Maybe it's because I found a two-inch spot. On my 4K television that they're coming to look at tomorrow. Which, with any luck, my warranty will cover it. But you know how warranties work. They typically, if they can blame it on you, they will. And then not take care of it. But anyway, so last chance. Anything? You guys got nothing? Nothing. All right. Screw it. Let's start the show. Hi, welcome back to World of the Psychic. Together we shall cast ourselves into the future. Seen any aliens lately? This is a part of America we never get to see. Are you by chance referring to the legend of the Loch Ness Monster? A ball of twine that weighs 19,000 pounds. 
What is this, nerd porn? It is about the Templar treasure, but it's also about other things, uh, conspiracy theories, urban legends, and other myths that are true. You are about to experience the awe and mystery which reaches from the inner mind to the Travel Oddities Podcast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so this is the Travel Oddities Podcast. I'm Brett. And I'm Harley. And I'm Eric. <laughs> we are here. Monday, May. <laughs> Dude, we already did that part. Don't start with me again. <laughs> we're uh, we're going to be talking about Emily's Bridge. Yeah, Emily's Bridge in Stowe, Vermont. Which is a haunted bridge. Which is not uncommon. It's not uncommon? Oh, 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 there's a lot of bridges that are haunted. Are all bridges haunted? It depends on who you ask, I bet. They can be. If you believe. If, if you, you believe, if you believe really hard, <laughs> if you believe really hard that they're uh, ghosts, so I don't yeah. know. We'll see. We're we'll get, get into to that. It, am I get the question? Is am I going to call bullshit? Um, I th- is there any doubt? Is there a chance? Yeah, there's a there's a damn chance, dude. That the, <laughs> the there, meteorologist right now, Mike Morgan's jumping up and down like I'm calling this one. They might call us on the Getner. I can actually show you what a Gettner is later. A Gettner? Yeah, we have those. Things. Gettner done. Gettner done. Anyway, let's let's get to the news first. There's something very important I forgot to tell you. News. So what do you got, Walter? <laughs> Comms right. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're we're revisiting an old show, Pope Lake, Kentucky. And if people in post editing didn't know, we're actually revisiting this show. We are. Doing a, a little bit of bouncing around here, um, yeah. But um, out of Pope Lip Pope Lip Kentucky, I have no idea. Pope Lick Kentucky, we're back to somebody looking for the. Did you say licking for? Licking. I can't you help did. it. He did say he, he did. I did looking, looking. Somebody looking for the Pope Lick monster. Holy crap. I can't believe you did that. How did we make it through that entire show? That was a gaffe. How did we not say l- la- licking multiple times? <laughs> Lick over here. <laughs> Lick. You uh, probably didn't. Didn't notice it. All right. Anyway. So um, <laughs> the woman searching for the legendary goat man is killed by an oncoming train. She didn't lick where she was going. <laughs> she wasn't licking where she was going. <laughs> Somebody threw her in front of a train. That's kind of the way I see it. Mm -hmm. Um, An Ohio woman was struck by a train and killed while investigating a spooky urban legend about a part man, part goat creature, or the Pope Lick monster, Mm -hmm. or as it was described um, by one witness. By one witness, it was half man, half goat, half sheep. Do the math on that one. Yeah, I don't know. Um so, 26-year-old Raquel Bain and her... So young. So full of life. Uh, and her boyfriend had heard about the Pope Lake monster while visiting Louisville, Kentucky. And they went a-searching. They didn't wa- listen to our episode. They did not, because we gave multiple warnings. Multiple warnings. Not only did we give warnings, but we pulled warnings from other videos, mm-hmm. that horrible warning. And then, on top of that... We explicitly said that there is no way on God's green earth we're climbing up that trestle. What they're going to have to do is probably install like a ball pit, like a Chuck E. Cheese ball pit underneath it or something, or a foam pit, because it's not going to end. No. You know, the guy that... 26 is outside of the range of deaths that I would expect. I'm saying... If you're 16, 17 years old and you're trying to impress another 16 or 17 year old individual Mm -hmm. climbing up on that trestle. Well, look what the guy did. He saved himself. He hung off the side. He's like, (laughs) it's on you, girl. I mean, I don't know how long they've been going out. Was it a long term thing? I have no idea. Uh, Okay, so we. (laughs) (laughs) I mean. How serious were they? He's like, well, you know. Well, this the, is, I mean, this is the way you can swipe left after you've swiped. You can, like, this is your, man, thank God that's over. 
Oh, like that's if you're messed him. up, dude. <laughs> that's messed up. <laughs> like her hair lip is cured now. Oh. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> just saying. Okay. Yeah. Um, no more. So no we, more gingivitis. We have <laughs> a new story, or a, a clip from the mm-hmm. new story. It's right so, off their website, right? Right off their website. Yeah. I mean, I believe it's sponsored by t- Tinder. I'm, if it wasn't <laughs> before, maybe it should be now. <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead and play that though. A couple in search of a local urban legend find something else, a train barreling at them while they are on the trestle. You don't have to wait long at Public Road. You'll see a train. They come in search of the goat man. So I guess you do have some people who are the paranormals and they try to explore those things. That's what 26-year-old Raquel Bain and her boyfriend were in search of on Saturday. They came out to Louisville to check out Waverly Hill Sanatorium for a haunted tour, but they didn't make it. Waverly Hill staffers were saddened when they found out why. Bain and her boyfriend decided to come out here to Poplet Road before their tour at Waverly to see if they could find the goat man. According to the coroner, Bain and her boyfriend made their way to the train tracks when the train surprised them. The coroner says the boyfriend told him that the two realized they couldn't make it to the end of the trestle, so they decided to hang off the sides, but Bain couldn't move fast enough. She was hit by the train and fell about 100 feet to the ground. <laughs> um, poor taste, Fox. Okay, Seriously. yeah, Fox News, you guys are all going to hell. That was not right. You know, I mean, for starters, they recorded in a goat pen. A goat pen, and they used a Mario. I mean, come yeah. on, it's unprofessional. It's it, was it was Bush League. It was. Anyway, league. rest in pl- rest, rest in peace. Please. Uh, now, hold on a second, though. Rest yeah, please. I listened to this thing about a dozen did you say times. Rest in fleece. I did. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. He is a half, half, half goat, half sheep, half man. So yes, it rest in fleece. So they they had a witness in there, and I'd listened to this a few times, but I just caught it this time, mm-hmm. where he said, "Yeah, these paranormals come out and they're investigating this stuff." What the hell is what that? Is a, what these is a paranormal? paranormals? I mean, I would consider you and I a pair of normal people. <laughs> Paranormals. <laughs> I have a pair of normal testes. I thought this was a family show. It is a family show. Testing one, two, threes. So, yeah, we told you. We warned you. Stay off the trestle. Did you not watch Stand By Me? <laughs> It's very River Phoenix. Am I wrong? Yeah, I no, you're completely right. You're right. You know, but at the same time, you know that she didn't catch the podcast, which is that, I it's on her. Think, it's I on can her. only think that contributes to what happened. But it's on her. Think about how many lives you guys saved for the people that did listen and didn't. He's got a point. That's now, you know there's I mean? a reason we brought him on. If I would, you I don't, man, I would rather die looking for a dog than to say, "Well, they died looking for the Pope Luke monster." Yeah. I think you kind of deserve, you deserve to fall off the trestle if you're looking for the Pope Boy Monster. I'm just now, kidding. Hold on. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> that's not well, right. No, if you can't be safe. Okay, now there's that's a point, different. There's a point of no return when you get on there. If you're going to be a bonehead, then it's on you. But going to, you and I both. Oh, we would have done it. We, we would do it. I wouldn't climb up on that trestle, though. No. And if you did it, I'd be I'd say, "Hey, you're a dumbass and you're going to die." Right. I mean, I know full well and I'd what record the risks that shit. are. You can't run outrun a train. They look like they're not going very fast, but they are. And when you're on one of those, th- there's no way but down. There's no This isn't freaking the Lone Ranger. Yeah, and it's 80 to 100 feet depending on where you land. You're dead either way. Me personally, I'm I'm a heavy guy. I'm thinking a seven foot fall might. Well, there's a high traffic area underneath that trestle, so I mean you're gonna get hit by a car. I mean there's it's your pavement pizza. All righty. <laughs> so sorry to hear it, Emily. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Should have listened. Her name is not Emily. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> What's her name? Raquel. Raquel. Sorry, Raquel. You should have listened. <laughs> okay, well, I feel so, bad for Emily too. <laughs> Speaking of Emily, 
Speaking of Emily. Can so we proceed now? We can. We can completely proceed. Proceed with the story of Emily and the, her bridge. Her bridge. That she inherited? That she... See, if I say allegedly, there's words that you gotta, you have to avoid. If you want any to have any credence or any your story to have any weight, you can't say legend has it. You can't say oh, because as the you, story because goes. Because you read the one of the, the top, skeptics guide to the six reasons why your ghost story could be BS. So who are, uh, you, who are you afraid you're going to offend? Well, I'm just saying I don't want to say legend has it or once upon a time or. But isn't that how every ghost story starts? It out? does because I mean, you're never going to have an eyewitness person like, yeah, I was okay, there. I so saw what happened. Here we go. The legend of the Emily Bridge. Emily's Bridge. <laughs> the, okay, this bridge was built in 1844, um, and was originally called um, the Covered Bridge Road or Gold Brook, and it eventually became known as Emily's Bridge or Stowe Hollow Bridge. It's a single lane, fifty foot long bridge. Looks creepy. Yeah, it looks creepy. So even if it even if you didn't have a death involved, you're gonna have some stories associated with it. Is that what your point yes. is? Yes. Now to paint a better picture of what this bridge looks like, if you've seen Bridges of Madison County, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, Silver Bullet. There's a bridge like that in Silver the movie Silver Bullet where Great movie. Corey Feldman has to like haul ass in his wheelchair. And he's trying to get across this bridge before the werewolf gets him. Right. Um, it's that kind of bridge. Agreed. Uh, do, yeah, I mean, no, I'm with you. That's that's I mean, right. So this bridge is actually was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1974. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of cool. Now, this following sentence starts just the way that you said that we couldn't start the sentence. <laughs> no. If legend it. is Just to be it. believed, a girl with a broken heart committed suicide on this bridge. Ever, okay, right or wrong, agree or disagree, you don't have to believe it to know every story that involves a bridge is similar to this. No. Dude, we literally just covered a public but, monster. I know that. But I'm, I'm saying we've covered a bridge before, didn't we? Yeah, the Pope Lick Monster. No. Do we not do Crybaby Bridge or something like that? No, we didn't we did do not. that. We ended up not doing that. No, you're making shit up. Maybe I did some research on some bridges. Well, there, it fits the. It's like this is one of those stories where it's insert jilted lover, insert, you know. Kind of a cookie cutter ghost I, story. Right. I mean, I guarantee as we move along, you're going to go, yep, yep. Okay, but that's that's beside the point because all ghost stories or all ghost phenomenon are going to be around somebody dying tragically. You're not going to have the little old lady who laid down, you know, on her 97th birthday and didn't wake up in the morning ghosts because she wasn't a tormented soul. So you're saying she doesn't she because she died peacefully she's not trapped in this in What this I'm saying ra- is she died peacefully she's not going to be a raging poltergeist. Well, I don't think Emily is a raging poltergeist. Well, there's some inclination that that's actually the case. Really? Well, from what I understand um there are some debates. There are quite a few. And we'll get to that. Obviously. I don't want to I don't want to spoil it for anyone. Spoiler, Brett's going to spoil it. Well, I'm just saying. Dude, you're already, it's like, it's be sh- it's bullshit, it's BS. You're going to read it. You're, you're a spoil- spoiler. You're a damn spoil sport. It's in, it's in here. I you're going to read it. I know. <laughs> so anyway, let's, let's talk about Emily. Let's talk about Emily that doesn't have a last name. Well, no, because this is the 1800s. You don't have last names in the 1800s. And, there's, and they didn't keep any historical records in the 1800s. They really don't have last names in the 1800s? No, I was totally okay. messing with <laughs> Emily Bridge. What's her name? Emily Bridge. Emily Bridge. That Bridges. Makes a lot of sense. She's related yeah. to Bo, Bo and Jeff Bridges. <laughs> 
Okay, so in the mid 1800s, Emily was supposed to meet her lover at what was then called Gold Brick Bridge to, to elope. elope. Many people do still get married there. Absolutely. Okay. Paranormal. So, paranormal. <laughs> paranormal. <laughs> damn paranormal. <laughs> Those paranormals get together. Um, so when her fiance never showed, Emily killed herself in a savage fit of desperation, hanging herself from the rafters of the covered bridge. Now, I feel like I'm getting ahead of myself here. They also reported that she may have jumped off the bridge. There are, there's another version and we are, it's included in our notes. So, but according to that one. So what's the ghost story? What's the, the ghost big story that fo- followed was that Emily came back as an angry specter or a poltergeist or a troubled soul, however you want to look at it. And gave people splinters when they grabbed the, the wood railing. <laughs> Naturally. <Okay. laughs> so a different version of the story is that Emily met a man who stole her heart and the couple had made plans to marry. When the wedding day arrived, Emily went to the church, and the dude didn't show up, and the jilted Emily took the family wagon in a frenzy of anger and sorrow and drove the horses, messed up the turn approaching the bridge, and drove the horses and herself into the river. Okay. So, and both... The horses and Emily died on the spot. Again, I'm going to harken back to the top six reasons why your ghost story may be BS. Because there's more than one more ghost than story. One version. More than one origin story? Yes. Okay, how how many spider Don't. hold No God. No. How many <laughs> Spider Man reboots do we have to go through? One, two, th- five. At okay. Least. And is Spider Man real? Yes, but <laughs> I'm just saying, at some point we'll probably see Miles Morales, but it's not going to happen tomorrow. What I'm saying is, we know how it all, the origin story here fits, insert ghost happenings in town XYZ and the population of one, two, three. It, it's... It's a mold that fits every legend has the same. It's an archetype. Now, okay, I am not all in when it comes to ghosts. Never in recent history have not had a ghost experience where I thought, all right, I believe in ghosts now. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'm not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater I don't know. I'm just saying I don't know. I know. What I'm saying is within two minutes of reading the ghost story, we have two versions already. Right. There's another one. Do you you ready for another one? Yeah. Okay. So um, the best known written source of the legend is from a high school paper written in 1968 or 1969 by a teenager named Susan. And there's a historian, Jill Mudgett who spoke to Susan in 2012, said that she didn't believe in ghosts herself and that while her fellow teenage friends often visited the bridge in search of thrills, that most of them didn't believe in the legend. But a 1978 newspaper story on Emily's Bridge stated that um, 10 years after Susan wrote the paper, she and a friend admitted to consulting a Ouija board to form one version of the legend and uh, include it in the school paper. So does it be start to unravel yet? Well, that's just... W- okay, again, yes, I can see your point. I can see that you're seeing the strings. But at okay. the same time, if if I just wanted to go back to a point in history where I still existed at that point in history, Eric, tell me... Uh, if you believe this, if if there was a local legend in your town, I'm a little bit older than you, and I said, no, I made that all up. I wrote a story in high school, and it, it's one of those stories where there aren't a whole a whole lot of solid facts. How do you how do you disprove that? How do you not go? Well, he was here, and he he knows details. I'm not, look, 
again, I, I was accused last week, quietly, on a, a telephone conversation that we had post-show, of being accusatory and being negative about maybe our list saying that our listeners, people, anybody that would believe in that kind of stuff is a weirdo, but keep sending us money. <laughs> uh, I did say that, but I didn't mean it that way. The thing is, if this pen right here moves off the table and falls onto the floor mm -hmm. and I can't explain it, Right, and there's not an anomaly. There's not an anomaly that you guys experience at the same time, like an earthquake. I can't explain it. There it is. There's one version of the story, but it's seen from your perspective, your perspective. My, there's three different perspectives of, of one version of the story. What I'm saying is, I'm not saying it's not, but there's too much. Well, maybe it was this. Well, maybe it was that. I mean, there's no proof. We don't have anything to back it up. Okay, but the the story continues that the person that wrote this story, Susan, mm -hmm. said the legend that she had gotten her source material mm -hmm. from the legend, which actually started in the 50s or 60s, and she was unsure of the actual story, but it it colored her version. So it existed before her, even she admits. Well, from what I read, and you may get there, this story either started in the 20s, the 30s, the 50s, or the 70s. Or the 60s. Or the 60s. So it's like, you know, every 10 year, uh, there's a 10-year cycle, almost, of new... Of the new, you know, version 2.0. That, that's all I'm saying. So, who do you believe? We have no, at this point, we know there's no historical records of an Emily. There is none. There's a gravestone with an Emily on it. In I can the local graveyard. I'm gonna, I, you want a gravestone with Emily on it? I can find you a gravestone by 8 o'clock. <laughs> Got like Walter Sobchak. I can get you. I can get you a toenail. Right. I can get you a toe. I can get it painted. I can get you a painted toenail by 2 o'clock. I mean, it's, I'm saying. But we don't know. There's no history of a suicide other than what we're hearing. Yeah. Yes, and I agree that is the case. Am I, am I being a curmudgeon? A little bit. Eric, am I being a curmudgeon? A little bit, but you've got a point. Okay. I mean... But uh, you do you do technically have a point, but you're talking if this actually happened in the 20s mm -hmm. or earlier, because, again, the bridge has been there since 1844, and you know how stories get twisted. But if it did happen... And how many people had vehicles if, if, if in the 1920s? Because there was also a story that she ran her, you know, carriage or whatever it was... Off into the you you told the story of the right. wagon, mm -hmm. and then you know. But when did that? I don't know. I mean, I'm sorry. But my Ma point is that pre 1930, mm -hmm. the chances of somebody burying somebody and not really leaving a historic, you know, just sticking a cross in the ground. Where, well, yeah, uh, that happened all the time. I mean, people got buried in the desert every day. Right. So I mean, it's technically feasible. You have to give me that. I'll give you that, but in town, it's a small town. It is a small town, but it's a one-lane bridge, so it it it's it it probably is the one way in and one way out at one point. Somebody seen somebody saw something. Okay, well there was um there was a woman that said that the story was made up entirely just to keep kids from crossing the bridge, which again, the public monster. Another example of a story that was believed to be perpetuated to keep kids from crossing the trestle. Okay, now if that's the case, if there are if there are adults out there making up damn stories to keep kids off bridges, can we say now between the fact that the cops come out to this place every Friday and Saturday night to kick kids off the bridge, and the fact you got people falling off the the trestle at 
in uh, Popelit, Kentucky, mm-hmm. on a regular basis, that telling kids lies about supernatural creatures in weird places is, is wrong. Not gonna uh, stop them from going. It's there? not. It not makes nowadays. you more. Cu- does it make you more curious? It does nowadays. But think about like back in the you know back in the twenties or thirties, like you guys were talking about when they didn't have TV and the internet, and you know your mom tells you that there's a a ghost on the bridge. You know, you don't know any better. You don't know any better because there's no. Nobody posted anything on social media. I'd still go. Maybe. But we're also talking about, you know, people still use things like fire and brimstone to keep to keep you from doing to keep you in line. You know? I mean that's just All right, so Brett is officially called bullshit on the whole backstory. I didn't No, I'm just messing with you. No, I mean I but how about some of the stuff that people have said to have witnessed currently? Okay. I'm up, um, for, I'm up for it. Uh, there have been a lot of people, a lot of people. You can, you can find pages and pages and hours and hours of YouTube videos of uh, people experiencing disturbing paranormal activity um, on the bridge. They're seeing orbs. They're feeling a disembodied hand scratch them or poke them. Um, people have reported scratch marks appearing on vehicles and being physically assaulted by Emily's ghost. So, no? Here's where I'm at. Okay, let's hear where you're at. When we hear people that have come out and said, hey, my bad, I that was me, I, I started it. But we have people, how do you, I, th- I think... This may be one of those cases where and I don't dispute all hauntings. I really don't. But I think you can – we've talked about this in private, just normal conversation. Enough people talk about it, then it becomes – A tulpa. Yes. Is what you're talking about. A exactly. Thought, a thought creation. A thought creation that, that, that haunts that, – that we haunt – so the combined YouTube videos have created a ghost. I think so. At Emily's Bridge. I mean, that's... I think it has. It's feasible. I mean, there haven't... To me, it's... We have reports of, but we don't have any solid, solid, solid evidence. Okay. I mean, so you're on a dark... How long is this bridge? 50 feet? Yeah. 50 foot bridge made out of wood. In the middle of the night, mm-hmm. and you hear footsteps on the bridge. You hear what sounds like ropes tightening, and then you hear a girl screaming. Or <laughs> are you crapping your pants right Probably, there, or yeah. are you going to wait till you're back in your car? If I'm there and I can touch it, or it can touch me, sure, I'm all in. All right. Give me the opportunity. Put me on the bridge. Let's f- see what happens. You try anything once, right? Well, yeah. What right. do you, I mean, what do you think? I think I, if those events happened to me, or if I just saw the uh, what the the white apparition, mm-hmm. the Emily, yeah. so to speak, just cruising along across the bridge or whatever. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm hard to rattle Mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm going to give it a, you know, a good 30 seconds of me trying to figure out where the wires are. Right. Or the lights emanating from. There have been things in my life. I think we can all agree. There have been things in our lives that we cannot explain. Noises, uh, you know, you're sitting there reading a, a newspaper or something, and it feels like something touches it. I mean, there's all kinds of different, you know, there feels like there's somebody behind you. I mean, there's all these different things, anomalies that can occur that we cannot explain. Sure. You guys ever hear your counters creak in the middle of the night all of a sudden? Just make like a big like creak noise? Mm-hmm. Every single house I've lived in, that has happened. And it just happens randomly. It seems like at night. And I know there's a, there's a logical reason why maybe the woods expanding or something it's a little more humid in the house than normal but right or it just could be no that what you're is. giant and you're like 
stressing the gravity field in your house. <laughs> that is a real possibility. I mean, Eric, you're a, <clears throat> I'm sorry, my voice is kind of starting to go a little bit. You're a tall guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would not want to, I don't know. I would not, I would not want to play Dark Souls 3 with you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I get that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so... There, there are also the people hearing banging on their cars or scratching or dragging on top of the roofs of their cars when they go across the bridge or when they're in a vehicle close mm-hmm. to the bridge. Now, most of this stuff either, and this is where I kind of lend some credence to your, your Mal- malarkey, your your Colin bullshit, but it either happens from twelve a.m. to three a.m. Mm-hmm. or from dusk until 9 p.m. So there's a little bit of a scheduling conflict. So, I don't know. Uh, uh, or the ghost is part of the union, and it, it takes a union break. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that was a bad joke. Um, bad joke. We, whatever. For all the union. I, I support the unions, by the way. <laughs> Even the paranorm, paranormal union. Well, let me ask you guys this. Have you, have you ever heard of a place called Jeremiah's Bridge in Anadarko, Oklahoma? No. No. Let me read you about this place. Uh-oh. And this is a bridge in Anadarko, obviously. Cars break down frequently on this bridge, even school buses, but only at night. And people claim to see a Native American man jumping off the bridge. They also claim to see things like blood dripping on their windshield when they drive over the bridge or dead animals hanging from the trees above the bridge when they stop to cut them down. They're not there anymore. Stuff like that. Oh, wow. See? This is a different parts of the u.s pretty much the same story do they have a girl named emily that committed suicide off that bridge i think jeremiah native, means it. yeah means native, Amer- <laughs> native american that's a that's a navajo for emily <laughs> <laughs> I, you know and, and and i'm not trying to badger our listeners with my my disbelief but this is one of those stories where you come across the, they also said that she jumped off the bridge. Right. Which, it's not that far of a fall. She would have survived. And there are reports that perhaps maybe it was a different bridge that it could have occurred at. I mean, it's just... Okay, so this has been a long time coming, and I kind of feel like... Are you going to fire me on the show? <laughs> <laughs> It's best to do it in a public forum. Are you, guys, so. are you coming out? <laughs> or? Um, no, this has been a long time coming. Okay. We have been needing to do an on-site um, actual physical investigation okay. of one of our locations. And we've done it a few times, but they've never come to fruition as an actual right. show. So, very shortly... We're going to do that, and I'm going to find the most terrifying place that I can possibly find within 18 hours of our current location, and we're going to go to that place. And we're going to get scared straight. And Wait, Brett is going to get scared straight. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. You know, we can say things now that we couldn't say last year. Thanks to the... the uh, thanks, Obama. Well, that and thanks to uh, Justice Scalia. Anthony Scalia, right? Anthony Scalia or Anthony Shear? <laughs> <laughs> True. Um, I'm ready. I mean, I'm 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 down. Let's let's scare. Let's get scared. All right. So let's go to PP City or uh, Travel P- Oddity Universe. Be prepared for an on-site investigation of locations sometime within the next. Four episodes. You know, hell, I think we could do the Jeremiah Bridge and that doesn't sound an scary hour. They tore it down. They did just recently. Yep. So how do you get across? Just jump, I guess. I it's the Jeremiah Ditch now. <laughs> um. Anyway, so okay, so back, back to Emily uh, or Emily's Bridge. Visitors to the bridge are asked to remain quiet after dark to respect the many Stowe residents who live near the bridge, and they're asked not to litter or defame the bridge in any way. As, again, it is a registered National Historical Site. And it's a nuisance because the echo, the sound travels. It's like a freaking sound tunnel. 
it keeps people up at night because people go out there and beer swill and ride on each other's cars and stuff like that. Now, paranormal investigators have, they're usually pretty respectful. They don't create a huge disturbance. So if you go, behave. Behave yourself. Right. Now, to lend credence again to your six reasons oh. why it's okay. all bullshit or whatever, most paranormal experts who visit this bridge do not find any compelling evidence of ac- paranormal activity on the bridge. And, and that's the problem I have. People that are trained to detect Slimer don't find Slimer. So... I gotta go. I gotta go with it's just a legend. All right. What's the difference in a legend and facts? Um, documentation about twelve know. inches. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I knew that was coming. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this does sound like. If it is real, mm-hmm. a vengeful spirit or a poltergeist. Of course it is. It's a, a woman that's been jilted. So there there are some options you can take. There's a, there's a ghost on the bridge that's going, Mm-mm. you ain't going to do me wrong, boy. Bye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. Be <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> warned. It is my job to arm you against the foulest creatures known to wizard kind. You may find yourselves facing your worst fears in this room. Know only that no harm can befall you whilst I am here. I must ask you not to scream. Speaking of, real quick, can I say something? Sure. I'm kind of excited for Fantastic Beasts. Oh, yeah. The new and, Harry and where And where to find them with Eddie Redmayne. Looks pretty cool. It yeah, really does. Yeah. So anyway, go ahead. All right. So if we are up against a vengeful spirit or a poltergeist, there, we do have some solutions. But I've only I've I pulled one. I pulled one. I've got ideas too. No, I just pulled one. What? There is an herb called asphodel. Mm. According to legend. This herb is purported to help spirits find a portal to the other side. So, just roll with roll with some of that. Asphodel. Just get yeah. get the it's mystery like machine. Infidel, but <laughs> ass. Right. I'm trying to think where I could go with that and still keep us from having to me re- re-record a the following podcast <laughs> is naughty by nature. <laughs> Asphodel. Okay, so if you don't believe Emily's Bridge, now uh, can I not throw in a couple things? Go for if it. If you're bro. we're dealing with a poltergeist, go for it. You need a, an Indian. You need a little midget lady. Are we going poltergeist the movie here? Yeah. Okay. You need a rope so you can pull pull Carol Ann back in. Mm-hmm. Go to the line. Like, mommy <laughs> I'm just saying. Well they didn't know the Indian died trying to save Carol Ann. Yeah. Is there a burial ground anywhere near this this town? They're always, they have a cemetery. An Indian that, cemetery, oh, I don't Indian think, burial ground? That's what's that's the other thing. Every town's got a cemetery in it. <laughs> you know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so again, if you think Emily's Bridge is completely mundane, there's nothing supernatural going on here, there's still some cool shit to do in the town of Stowe, Vermont. It actually looks pretty cool. Okay. Um, for starters, just to throw back to last week's show, yeah. Um, total square mileage, this mm-hmm. town is only slightly bigger than Denver International Airport. Is that right? Oh, yes. Wow. Weird. <laughs> It's about 130% the size of Denver International Airport. Whoa. And it's not a small town. Uh-huh. Um, the stores in the town of Stowe all sell souvenirs with the Emily's Bridge on Cash there. Cash in on it. There you I, go. I'm Make all a buck. For it. I'm all for it. I'm all, I mean, you know, if my house was haunted, 
I would sell trinkets. Roswell did it. Roswell it's did working it. Working out for them. They worked at. I mean, they're a cash cow. Man. I would have it it'd be what? Well, okay, think of a business. What would you? Poltergeist pot pies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got No, what would your business be? Emily's buns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. It was a dad joke. Oh, Eric, that was not a dad joke. <laughs> Eric, what would you, like if you were going to open a, a restaurant? I do like a like a vegan gelato place. <laughs> <laughs> because there's no vegan gelato places in Stowe. I guarantee Emily's it. Emily's clean toss salads. <laughs> Uh, million clean. dollars idea. Million dollar ideas. I'm telling phones. you, man. It's like the leap into conclusions, Matt. Never that's, mind. That's worth a million dollars. That's, we're going to have to do a lot of editing of dead air that seems to follow everything that I say. <laughs> I told you, dude. If you if you bring a a weak joke, I'm le- I'm just leaving it. I'm leaving it behind. It's going to plow past it. You're just gonna just gonna leave it. Yeah. Like. What's her name? His boyfriend did on absolutely <laughs> Trestle. You're just gonna leave, like, bye, Felicia. Ah! Yeah. You think he watched your? You think he was hanging there, going, "Oh shit, dude!" I think that guy was probably shitting his pants. No, she got hit by the train. She didn't fall. But she did after Ooh. she got hit by the train. So she got the she got the best of both worlds, or the worst of both both worlds. She got the double splat. Yeah, the uh, ground beef death. Not cool. Sequence. I feel bad because this literally just happened. This guy accidentally stumbles upon our, our podcast or her parents or something. I, I feel like. Okay, but think about ways to die. Like, that could be painful if you didn't die immediately. But if you did die immediately, train's one of them. I mean, it's you have a, about two seconds to go, and that's it. Now, True. now the real question is: is in ten, fifteen years, are we going to be hearing about the legend of oh, Raquel's Bridge? Raquel's Bridge. She was in search of the legendary Goat Man and tragically lost her life. And now she haunts every train that goes across the tracks. Legend has it she rides upon the horns of the Goat Man. <laughs> No, if you go there at the right time, you get to see the Pope Lick monster like throwing down against <laughs> Raquel's poltergeist. But here's the other thing, too. <laughs> Think about that. There have been, over the years, people have died on that bridge. Yeah. But we haven't recirculated to the point where it's... I mean, that should, that bridge should be like a... I don't know. like the should look like the New York subway filled with ghosts. Unless the Popelik monster eats ghosts or something, you don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the diet of the Popelik monster is. I don't either. I know he smells like sex. Does he? But does he have? Well, does he have nasty, a, nasty goat sex? Does he have a goat wiener or a human wiener? I don't know. Well, no. It depends on what half of his bottom half is, because remember, he's half goat, half man, half, half sheep, half sheep. But what if it's down the middle instead of? Yeah, that's true. What like if? Yeah, it's like he's like a Neapolitan of. So he's got like a half goat, half creature. Half maybe bandit. all three aspects of him start at the junk region and, and just kind of bend off out. Like the, maybe that's the part that's half goat, half human, half sheep. You would be just like the most undoable creature. You're like the fat kid at the lunch table. That's why he hangs out at that bridge. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so other things to do in the town of Stowe. You have a weekend-long British invasion event um, held in the third week of September every year. This actually looked really cool. And when I first read about it, I was like, okay, British cars, who the heck cares? But it's not like, you know, like the British sports cars. Oh, it's like. But it's m- like the old school. Like Mini Cooper stuff? Older. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> but th- it looked really cool. Um, and basically celebrate all things British, British mm-hmm. lifestyle, prim- primary focus on classic British uh, British cars. Looked really cool, something you could do. They also have the Stow Flake Balloon Festival, which is in July. 
they have it's a hot air balloon festival you uh, you like free admission if you're staying at the local hotel they have children's activities food beer wine gift shops spa mm-hmm. treatments all sorts of stuff so looked really cool yeah. to me sounds cool i mean that i like i awesome. like balloons yeah say something quickly i did you're like eh. I'm like, Meh. God dang it. We got a, <laughs> An hour long podcast is going to be 30 minutes long because there's like. Okay, so the Stowe Theater <laughs> Guild, along with the Hyde Park Opera House and the Waterbury Festival Players, offer th- theatrical productions every summer, which is not really my cup of tea, but, you know, if you want to go see some Shakespeare, apparently they do a bang up job. Cool. Uh, you also have hiking trails. The Pinnacle Hiking Trail is located there. Um, it's a moderate, uh, trail for beginners. So it sounds to me Mm -hmm. like there's things that you can tangibly, there's some tangible things that are believable, like real balloons and real stuff to do. There may be, there may also be ghost balloons. I don't know. I haven't been cool. I'm just saying, I mean, I mean, they've got all these things that are cool that have nothing to do with ghosts, but you're there and you're like, Hmm, there's a ghost. Let's right, go. Let's go out. see nothing, or let's go have. Wait, no, we can't because it's between. Uh, it's dusk. We or, can't come back until midnight. Or you go for the ghost and you stay for the hot air balloon festival. Do they have a sign on the bridge that says "closed between the hours of"? No, because it's nine a.m. to what? Nine p.m. to. Th- um, no, it was dusk till 9 p.m. or midnight to 3 a.m., depending on which story you... What is this? A... <laughs> depending on how much the ghost drank the night before, which you feel like getting <laughs> yeah, up on time. Is this a museum? <laughs> when do ghosts keep hours? Hey, man, I don't know. They just said that's when the majority of paranormal activity happens. Like if I go there and I see somebody dressed up like Emily because the real Emily's on break... Like it's some like some dude ghost. That's I didn't up even like, know where you were going. I like had to stop and replay that in my head <laughs> to go. Oh, that's ridiculous. It's like the the ghost Disneyland. It's like I know you're not the real Goofy. <laughs> the fill in ghost. You're the fill in. It's the fill in ghost. Hi, my name's Phil. <laughs> Literally. But anyway, <laughs> cool. I mean, it sounds like there's a lot to do there if you're just you know out chumming around. Nice. <laughs> okay, so there is. Uh, you also have it's. It's really it's a it's a mountain resort town. So you've got skiing, snowboarding, uh, family retreat kind of situations. So looked really cool. I did find us a restaurant. Yum. I think you're gonna be happy with it. Because it has food. Uh, dude, why are you gonna be such a go ahead dick? <laughs> It's called Doc Ponds. Oh. Their yeah. slogan, eat and drink, and about a thousand records. Oh, cool. A misfit like clan of marauders of darkness that have been committing heinous acts of hospitality and enjoyment in Stowe, Vermont. <laughs> it gets 4.7 stars, though. Exactly. And they have a massive beer list. Me likes beers. Uh, the food's solid. It's kind of all over the place. But they they cover all the bases, and this place open twenty four hours a day, and that's what I'm talking about. You know, I want a beer at twenty four hours a day. You know, so again, it's called Doc Ponds. I get thirsty. You know, I like to drink a beer when I'm out ghost hunting with a paranormal guys. I'm really trying to suss out what exactly the accent Vermont. Oh, it's a Vermont accent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I moved to Vermont. You know, 1980. Vermation accent. <laughs> I'm from uh, Saskatchewan. No, but. Uh, well, so. you know what time it is. It is. No. What time is it? It's time for. Listener feedback. <laughs> woo, woo, woo. <laughs> so we have quite a bit of listener feedback. I, you're, you you know what? It took us 30 minutes to start the show because I kept saying, Monday, May the 2nd? 
Oh, so since I put you a just question said, mark. We have quite a bit of listener feedback. Well, my, <laughs> um, my question was, I don't know what we consider a lot of listener feedback. So that was the question in my voice. Was how much is a lot of listener feedback? Well, one of them comes from one of my favorite comic book heroes from the nineties. All right, Lobo. Lobo, yeah, from uh, Project Archivist podcast or or DC Universe. <laughs> um, he commented on our Facebook page again. Said, "I love your show, Lobo. We love you, man." Uh, we'd love to come on your show. I, I think if anything, it might make ours better. I'm cool with that. I agree. I mean, you know, we're getting there. We're ready. So uh, Michael DeFries from South Carolina shared our sh- uh, our last show on his Facebook page. Or DeFries. Or DeFreeze. Sorry. It looks like DeFries to me, bro. Because it says D-A-F-R-I-E-S. <laughs> what? D fries. D E fries? D E F R I E S. That's D fries. I bet it's defray. You know what? If you went to Google, you can do Google um, pronunciation and it will tell you the most commonly. He's from South Carolina, dude. His name is D fries. I guarantee it. Eric, if are, you, you, are you doing it right now? I'm doing it right now. If he lived in Boston, then yeah, it's not. But in South Carolina, his name is D fries. It just is it a small e? Yes. De fries. It's not de fries. However you want to say it, de fries, de, de fries. I don't care. Uh, we're making any headway? Uh, de freeze. De freeze. Okay, de-freeze. thank you. In South Carolina, it's de fries. Okay, well, <laughs> what's your favorite thing about the burger? De fries. I mean, come on, <laughs> dad joke. That dad joke. Dad that was joke. a dad joke. Okay, anyway. Okay, so Kenny Williams from Oklahoma shared a, a news story on our page about the public monster story. That was our inspiration for our news story tonight. As a matter of fact, that was the news story, wasn't it? That was the news story. Thank you, Kenny Williams. Thanks, Kenny. So the guys over at Project Archivist did mention us on their show. They did. So I wanted to play that, if you're okay with that. I'm okay with it. I love those guys. Have you listened to their show yet? I have listened to some of it, yes. Dude, why are you doing that? No, I'm not. I'm just saying, I listen to everything they've got in their feed, and I'm caught up. But they have, I think, like 170 shows that are not in their feed because they only do like the last 10. And I'm... Project Archivist, you have to understand something about me if you haven't figured it out by now. I have a little bit of an ADHD problem. I can't sit still. So it's hard for me to to dial in sometimes. No offense. I like I, your show. I will work on it. I mean, I Brett. like the fact that they mentioned us on their show. All right. So we and they that? mentioned you by name, and they just kind of said, piss off to the other guy. But it's all right. Well, now there's a third guy. Eric, they didn't even bring Eric up. I mean, of course, he wasn't on the show at the time. I still but- take that. I take that personally, but that's okay. Yeah. That's I'm- okay. I fully accept, expect. I fully expect <laughs> that they go back and re-edit episode one eighty two of their podcast. I'm glad that they lick us. Because <laughs> you were about to say I fully sex. When you were about to say expect, you were about I fully sex them too. All right, so the clip. Let's what hear was it. that podcast that joined our Facebook page? What the oh. hell was it called again? Oh, I just dear. Yeah, you know what? You put me on the spot. You're oh. a. Ch- well, They're edit really this up. good too. I can no, edit this it's up. Uh, Travel Oddities. Travel Oddities. That it, they have a great show, and they do. it was weird because I've been listening to them, and then you put them on the page, and you said "Welcome Harley," and I didn't know what the hell you were talking about. So me and three other people were like, "Did you finally buy a motorcycle?" It's not, dude. I'm married with kids, dude. I don't got shit. I am married with kids as well, and I have. <laughs> Yours a are grown. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then it Shut was up. like, wait a minute, it's the guys from that podcast, and they're part of our page? What the hell's going on here? So hopefully uh, they, they've been listening to our show, and hopefully they find us. Yeah, uh, they're gone. They left the page already? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, thanks again to uh, those guys at Project Archivist for supporting the show. We support them. Yeah, it's awesome. There's nothing more flattering. 
been giving, you know, a reach around to other podcasts. You know, they actually do something that we have yet to to do. What actually deliver something of substance? <laughs> <laughs> They, they might – okay, so they do two things <laughs> that we have yet to conquer, The, the that being the first. The second, I think they do their entire show over Skype. Really? I'm 99% sure those guys are in two different places. Now, I know for a fact they do their interview – they do an interview portion where there's somebody else on the show over Skype. But I'm pretty sure that those two guys are in two different places. So – they're better than us. See, and it sounds wah, it's wah, well, no, it wah. and it sounds seamless. It yeah, does. They it really do a really good job. Some, I mean, you've had Skype conversations all the time. Well, imagine us trying to do Skype with the internet in Chickasha. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't. We may if we. I'd love to do a Skype with those guys. Um. But I don't know. We'll see. It is what it is. It is what it is. All right, so uh, that is Emily's Bridge, all 50 bullshit feet of Emily's Bridge, <laughs> according to Brett. I'm a believer. I don't know that I'm a believer. I think it happened. I think all all six stories are true. They're all true. Um, <laughs> I mean, they're all different Emily's. <laughs> now, I mean, There's probably a lot of Emily's um, in the phone book. In uh, Stowe, Vermont. Now, I'm just thinking if that if that were the case, that there were at least a half a dozen Emilys that died on that bridge, then I'm going to say, yeah, for sure, it's got to be haunted. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean. And don't go there if your name's Emily. Don't go there if your name's Emily because you're going to die and be trapped in another dimension on a 50-foot wooden bridge. And, uh, now, if your name is Emily and you're in that area, like you're within, say, a mile of that bridge, mm-hmm. and somebody wants you to take a ride in a carriage, not doing screw it. Screw that. Done. Run away. Done. <laughs> um, not happening. I, I, but here's the thing: if I died, I would love to come back as a ghost. Because by all accounts, if depending on who you ask, I'm going to hell anyway. Yeah. So st- sticking around. For a few millennia to to just not kinda, burn in hell to make things drip on the grill out where, in the, the where smoking area. Where would you want to haunt though? <sighs> want to hang, hang around a bridge for six hundred? Well, years? no. Here's the thing. I, I here's what I do believe about hauntings. If I die here, I'm probably either going to haunt here, places that I've frequented, or here. I'm not going to like the ghost of bread is at Chuck E. Cheese. I don't go there. You know what I mean? I can I'm, think of worse places to haunt, though. I think, <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I think Brett is going to be 75 years old, 80 years old, feel that heart attack come on, call the ambulance and say, yeah, can you take me to the locker room? <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the girls' locker room. No! <laughs> no, I would probably haunt Harley. So he could constantly say, I, I I hate you with a white hot passion for the rest of his life. Um, I, do that. I might help you. You Have you ever seen that movie? Uh, Ghost. Ghost. With no, Patrick Swayze. Ghost, Patrick Swayze. <laughs> Will you teach me how to, how to make pottery? Yes. <laughs> and weave baskets. And when it's time for me to go, I'll say, I love you, Eric. I've always loved you. And you'll say, I know, or ditto. You'll say ditto to me. A single and tear falls out single of my tear. into my beard and... And it'll be, I'll disappear into the mist. For all, for all eternity. Cheesy CGI version of myself. But yeah, you'd want to come back, wouldn't you? I don't know. You, I don't what know what's you on haunt? the other side. What would you haunt? Be real. I, honestly, I don't know. A pizza shop. Pizza shop sounds Italian. good. You're Italian. Pizza but you couldn't eat right the now. pizza. You couldn't eat the pizza. Dude, you could slimer the hell out of some pizza. I, I guess you could slimer it. <laughs> Ah, I'm going to put my ghostly jizz all over this <laughs> white Alfredo pizza. <laughs> all right, anyway. on that note, that's uh, Emily's that's Bridge. That's Emily's Bridge. I think we hit the high notes. I think we covered... I don't think anyone can complain this time that we didn't give enough information. 
Well, we checked ectoplasm off the list. We did right at, the, right at the end there, so that's that's good, dude. I'm I'm willing to bet we're good because I didn't I didn't come across the feedback and. He's going to be horribly ticked off at us because it probably officially did come on Tuesday and I'm considering it feedback for last week's show and so I didn't include it. But I'm willing to bet Anthony Shear, the bad mother trucker, our executive producer, is going to say that we should have had another hour. I'm t- when we get to where we can comfortably do an hour... By that I mean we show up in like, you know, our pajamas doing this stuff. And we're not doing it when you guys are driving home at midnight. We might be able to do two hours. Either that or Eric and I are going to die one of these nights on the way home and it's going to be Eric and Harley's Bridge. We're- <laughs> we have to do a solo <laughs> podcast about What What about if you it. die right before you get to the bridge? You're like, oh, God, spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be... The, uh, what is it, Harley and Eric's shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> the ghost of mile marker 320. <laughs> you know that median, it said there's two guys that haunt the median every night at, from midnight to 5.30 a.m. <laughs> you, you don't want to stop in the middle of H.E. Bailey Turnpike. You don't. You don't I, want to stop there. I don't think you want to stop there anyway. No. They're haunting the easy go, at, <laughs> the easy go McDonald's combo. Anyway. Well, that's been Travel on at Ease. I'm Brett. Dude, no, we, it hasn't. No, we have to tell people how to oh, yeah. give us some feedback. I'm You're sorry. Always, dude, we do this show exactly the same every week. I know. Just I'm like sorry. an outline in Can front we, of you. Are we, just, are we leaving this in? Yes. Okay, leave it in. Okay. <laughs> have to leave it in. So anyway, good so, news. What? Instagram's up. Instagram. Really? Yes. We have an Instagram page. We do page. have an Instagram account. Travel Oddities has an Instagram page. Travel Oddities podcast on Instagram for all you millennials out there that are listening. One more time because I don't think people are going to believe Travel this. Oddities podcast has a Instagram that I have devoted my entire life to now. And that's Travel Oddities podcast on Instagram? Tra- Travel Oddities podcast on Instagram. We're also on Twitter, Travel underscore Oddities at Twitter. And Facebook, and we've been. Um, I we do share the episode every episode on Twitter. So if you want to, if you want to access it that way, you can do that. Um, Facebook, <coughs> we had a big bump, big bump last week. Uh, Seventy seven new likes on yes. Facebook last week alone. We're cruising to three hundred. We're dude. We're knocking on three hundred's door. We need to be we cruising are. to five hundred. We do. We'll what did I say about three hundred? I said. 300 men went against an army of a million Persians and lost. Imagine what they could have did with 1,000. All right, so we're going for 1,000. We're going for 1,000. We need a th- we need 708 likes in the next week. <laughs> in, a, in a week. Where, where, it, how do we have these hackers from, like, Kazakhstan and China and Russia, but they don't hack our Facebook and like our stuff? Yeah, I mean, if you if you're gonna try to spam our page, at least give us a five star review on iTunes, Travel Oddities Podcast. I mean, or, the Illuminati was busy on our Skull and Bones, dude. It's still uh, it's going. Like, it's like twenty thousand downloads. It's like ten. Ten thousand downloads. Yeah. Jeez. We should get a free scholarship to that to the college for as many downloads as we've had. Uh, yeah. That's a lot of downloads, man. I think George George W. Bush ought to come tap us. O.W.? That's a lot of ears. That's a lot of ears, man. Agreed. Anyway, um, so. so, also, hit us up on the, the odd line, 7865-Oddity. Do we have the voicemail up yet? We are going to have the voicemail oh up before we leave this building. I recorded it last week. It didn't work. We're going to do it again tonight. Okay. Oh, cool. So... That's been the Travel Out of These Podcast, that is, guys. That's it. I'm Harley. I'm Brett. I'm Eric. Peace. Thanks for listening, guys. Namaste. Yeah, that's right.
Here he comes now, here he, here he comes now. Here he comes now, here he, here he comes now. When I go to Vermont, I take the train. The ride is long, but who's to blame? I see new people, new things. Mountains of blue kings, purple mountain majesties with shiny golden rings. The rich, the poor, the ride all day. The green mountain state is your home brave. So if it's summertime, the mind is quite nice. Back in these falls, say hello to Mr. Ice. Life gets slower when the weather turns brisk. Now's not the time, throw the flying disc. But you can make an igloo ski down the hill. Anything you like to do until the day ends and you have to go home. Then I recommend you have to eat your cocoa pancakes in the morning. That will be swell. The syrup is fresh and so is it. <laughs> Don't and and welcome to the Travelotti's podcast, right? <laughs> what? You're such. A... Are we already? This Am I not supposed to say? This is the thing, right? This is. I it. mean, this is it, dude. We're in it. It's in Travelotti's podcast. It's fucking episode twenty. Can I not say welcome to Travelotti's podcast? Yeah, but you end up saying it again. Okay. It's Travel Alley's podcast, episode 26, Emily's Bridge in um, Stowe, Vermont, right? <laughs> why do you have to, why <laughs> must you sound so, like, you're questioning it. It's like, it's uh, Emily's Bridge, ep- episode, episode 26. 26. Okay, start over. Emily's, <laughs> is it Emily's Bridge? Emily's Bridge. Okay. All right. Well, here we go. I'll try it again. Are you ready? What's today's date? May the 2nd. <laughs> it's the 2nd, right? Yes. Okay. Is, yeah. Let's start over again. Ready? Three, two, one. Two, three, so four. So I want to say welcome. <laughs> this you, is... you can do whatever you feel comfortable with. Okay. But... Three, two, one. Welcome to Travel Oddities Podcast. It is Monday. May the 2nd, 2016. <laughs> what is happening? Dude, did you hear the question mark at okay, the I'll end stop. of Monday? Okay. Like, no, seriously. All right. Eric, uh, did you hear it? I'm going to listen to okay, it. Okay, I'm done. Time. Ready? Yeah. Welcome to the Travelotti's podcast. It's Monday, May the 2nd. <laughs> <son of laughs> bitch. Okay. Now, you, now you can't not do it. Okay. Welcome to the Travelotti's podcast. It's Monday, May the 2nd, 2016. <laughs> Episode 26, Emily's Bridge in Stowe, Vermont. Uh, Are we not going here? No, go. Okay, so stop. Ready? (laughs) You can't stop. All right, here it goes. Welcome. All right, here it goes. All right. Three, two, I hate you. With a red, white, and blue hot passion, I hate you, man. You have to turn away <coughs> from each other. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Three, two, one. That's not going to hell. <laughs> Three, two, one. Welcome to Travelotti's Podcast. It's Monday, May the 2nd, 2016. <laughs> Episode 20. <laughs> I think Carly just farted out of his mouth. Did you fart out of your mouth, dude? <laughs> It's like a freaking car. It's all <laughs> in. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to? No, you. Go. We're three minutes in. <laughs> okay, here we go. Three, 